laughs, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, are you going to interview us again? Yes. Oh, I love that. This is my favorite. <laughs> and, you know, I got, as, as this comes to an end, I have to get my reel together, so when they fire Michael from Regis, you know, I mean, with Live with yes. Kelly. Is he doing okay? <laughs> I think he's doing all right, but I don't know. I watch and I get, like, it's just not, not, it's not right. I don't yeah. know. I think it's just she's Eric so generic. big and she's so tiny next to him. It seems weird. The, yeah. I mean, uh, what, did they just do that for, like, because he was a football player and wanted that I think they fought, like, base? let's get different blood. Let's see if we can get some younger people and not have a median age of, like, 70 of viewership. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, hey, guys. Hi. Hello. Hi. So here we are again, and it's sort of the end of this journey. And I'm really curious, you know, in five years, when you signed on, I'm sure, to Catherine Hardwick's vampire <laughs> movie, you know, $40 million vampire movie, did you think in your wildest dreams it would be even half of this? I don't think we thought it was God, going no, to be no. anything we like were, this. You know, we were standing in we the were very woods, skeptical. <laughs> you know, in I the think. rain, going like, what are we doing? Yeah, I mean, we had rain coming down, our makeup was streaming, yeah, streaming down our face, the wigs were falling and off, and we were like, we, we look like the monsters, <laughs> and we were like, this is going to end our career, this is going to be really bad. <laughs> And we had no idea that Catherine was putting together such a cool movie. Because you don't know the tone of the movie. I think once you know what the tone of the movie is, then you get it. But yeah, when you're just shooting scene by scene and you're like, in the hands of the wrong director, it could have been terrible. Oh, yeah. You know, because it was very delicate material. It could go really goofy very quickly if you don't deal no, with it No, she right birthed way. it. I mean, she yeah. really made it what it is today. In some ways, I feel like it's almost like, I mean, this is going to be a cheesy cliche, but like a high school. It's like every year yeah. came together, but there were some new people, mm -hmm. new directors, yeah. and sort of now that's sort of come to an end after five years. Is it, is it, what's, what's the overall sentiment and feeling? I think the last movie, oh, it definitely felt like that we had a whole new crop of actors come in, and we felt like, you know, we had senioritis, you know, and we were like, they were all kind of coming into the fresh school, looking at it like, wow, this is really cool. And then they were going out and hanging out, and they had their new freshman click, and they were like, come out with us. And we were like the old people that were like, no, we're going to bed. <laughs> you know? yeah. We've done that already. Now we're going to 15 more minutes of sleep in the morning is uh, yeah, you, you learn is a how luxury. Important that is. Yeah. And, uh, and so it was kind of fun to watch them go through it, because uh, we had that. And then, um, you know, we were the old seniors. I think we, it was actually felt like we were the freshmen in college that were still kind of going to high school. <laughs> like we went to high school for five years instead yeah. of four. <laughs> yeah, it was a trip. I mean, it was, and it was, I mean, it's sad right now because, like, this is the last time I'm going to do a junket with Peter, and, you know. I'll say that. We'll do another That makes together. me sad, you know. But, uh, I, I. She's like, I'm never working with this guy I again. will never <laughs> work with him again. Confessionalism in that movie? I'm not even going. <laughs> when I said it was the last junket, I was thrilled. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, I, it's just, you know, seeing the movie the other day was very, very emotional, and, you know, but it's time. It's, it's like, we're so lucky that we got to finish this thing. Yeah. I, I feel a sense of closure just knowing that we got to finish all of the books. You know, that's a big feat. I mean, when we first started, there mm -hmm. was only three books. So our goal for the first movie was, hey, if enough people go and see this movie, maybe we yeah. can get a second, we can go do, you know, the second book. Maybe, possibly. And then, um, you know, they just, the fans came out in such great it was support. It crazy, too, right? When it opened, yeah. I remember my mom emailed me something like, 67 million or something like because that's what we opened with or was yeah. it 70 million or something yeah. and it was like this shock yeah it was almost numbing like you didn't really believe it you know because yeah. we, we didn't know yeah we didn't know what was the moment for each of you where you thought oh wow this is something way more than i thought you know whether was it the premiere comic-con a fan on the street like what was the moment where you thought like okay like, this is something that's in the zeitgeist, that's a cultural phenomenon. Like, mm -hmm. I'm in something bigger than I realized. I know for me, I mean, it happened so many millions of times because I kept being shocked by it every time. But the very first time I was doing a show in San Diego, I was working on something else. I think I hadn't even shot the movie yet or I had just been cast. And these, I was sitting at a restaurant and these girls from Mexico came up to me. The movie had not come out yet and said, are you Esme? And I was like, it was so bizarre and amazing. I, I, like, they hadn't even seen the movie yet, didn't know me from anything else, but knew that I was Esme. I think for me it was um, the first time I realized this was such a huge phenomenon was 
Well, there were two. One was after we finished wrap, uh, wrapping the first movie. The movie hadn't come out yet, and I was in Hawaii. And people were reading the books, like all along the beach, people were oh, reading yeah, this book. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, and I was like out on this deck, which you had to swim like 20 feet out to this deck. And some girl, like 14 year old girl, swam out there and she said, You're playing Carlisle <laughs> in Twilight, aren't you? And I was like, The movie hadn't even come out yet. So I was completely shocked. But I didn't think it was, even at that point, I was just like, That's kind of weird. But th when it really hit me was the premiere of Twilight. Because we showed up, I got out of the car, and it was like four blocks of like screaming fans. And you're literally turning your head going, what, who are they screaming for? Like you, like the Beatles showed up well, or something. nobody warned and us. Like, nobody, nobody warned us that no it was going to be like, like that. like the entire town of Westwood had yeah. been shut down. And I, I remember driving up and having that same thing of like, what is happening? What is happening I'd here? Not, I've been to a million premieres, yeah. obviously. Like, there was everywhere you turn, and they would be, like, screaming my name. And, and the movie like, hadn't, they hadn't seen the movie yet. And they were all so yeah. excited and so happy. And I, and I, the yeah. only thought that was going through my mind was, if they don't like this movie, <laughs> this is going to become a very angry crowd that's going to chase us out of this movie theater. And... Thankfully, Thankfully, you know, they, they liked, liked it, it, and they've been I don't supporting know if they us saw ever it. since. They yeah. were just camping out. <laughs> yeah, they were just camping I don't think anyone knew it. Yeah. Not a studio, not anyone except the police who were in Westwood going, what the hell is going yeah. on? Neither yeah. what was that. Um, there's not a lot of time, so, and you have to go, but favorite moment, favorite memory from the sort of the last movie? Hmm. hmm. I think the wedding was really spectacular from Breaking Dawn 1. Yeah. And then Breaking Dawn 2, I think the... <laughs> The battle sequence will always be ingrained in my mind because we shot it for like three weeks. I mean, I never got sides that were Six like weeks. this thick, you know, and, and you were like, we have to do like 30 pages of script in this one area. And every day we were just kind of like doing different parts of this sequence because there was a lot of talking back and forth and then this crazy battle. And um, it was, you know, it was a little, I've never shot a, a scene for that length of time in one area. My favorite scene from part two was, was Michael Sheen and Omar McWally. And it's a scene that's cut out of the movie, actually. What? They yeah, cut that? they cut that scene out. And uh, it, it, hap it happens. Uh, it, there's no rhyme or reason. You just have to move, the, move it along. But it was a gorgeous scene. And I, I suddenly was like really overwhelmed by how, what powerful, great actors they are. And you know, it's just so great to have them in the movie. Out of time. Oh. You got to go see Ellen. We gotta